What's up everybody, my name is Wreck-It Rob, and today we're looking at a free-to-play layer team. Now, we're gonna go in, I'm gonna show you what the team is made of, and then we're gonna take it real quick through a run of each of the different layers. Okay, so you see we have the Windwalker here to turn cycle everybody. That's gonna make sure that the disable passives that gets thrown on some of these units does get taken off a lot faster. We also have her turn cycling second skill to make sure that that gets done a little bit better too. But you see she just turn cycled the Necromancer. The Necromancer is also on Berserk. He's also on Berserk to make sure that in case that does get thrown on him, that he has a better chance of taking it off and of actually taking the passives or the disabled passives off of everybody else. We have the Jungle Heart and the Druid here for a little bit of extra healing, as well as the Druids providing defense buffs and counters, which are hopefully getting extended by the Jungle Heart. Make sure that when he does that kind of attack, uh, normally they would counter. So you see all of these absorbs that are popping up? Those are coming from the golem. All these shields on everybody, those are coming from the golem. Whenever the golem is actually hit, he throws a shield equivalent to like, I think it's like, I don't know, it's a certain percentage of his HP on the entire team. So if you're able to keep his passive activated, keep that disable passive off of him, then he'll be able to throw shields on everyone constantly. Okay, still, so my healers are doing a good job. Okay, so now that's off. He has immunity. He would have worked from there. Okay, now we got a drain quartz. Like I said, the main thing that allows this team to work is you need to build your team kind of around this unit, your rock golem. So the rock golem has this passive. When being attacked, generate a shield for all allies equal 5% of all max HP. Lasts for one turn. May stack being hit by a multi-hit attack. So every attack that the chimera does he doesn't he doesn't target anybody so every single attack he does is an aoe meaning that the golem's always getting hit so as long as you have his passive still activating he's constantly going to be throwing shields on everybody and constantly keeping your team alive the necromancer here i was debating whether i wanted to include but technically you can build the necromancer out of just three stars so i, I figured i would include him in this the necromancer is here because his passive Removes negative status effects from all allies except action locks, but that action locks aren't in this one. So he's constantly removing these things. But in case uh, disabled passive gets thrown on the necromancer, we have a combination of the jungle heart's third skill, which reduces the time of negative status effects while increasing active beneficial effects. And then the windwalker. The windwalker is helping to provide extra turn cycling hopefully get those taken off a lot faster and then we also have the druid in the front he's providing some healing with his third skill and then a defense buff and counter buff with his second skill which once again is hopefully being extended by the jungle heart providing more defense and more counters the thing with this team is you can see i have a fair amount of four stars in the back you can completely get rid of these and just go with this team right here and even for the druid what you can do is you can get rid of the druid and probably throw in this guy and he would work just fine so this is a two star being used but he's being used because he has constant defense buff on the entire team you could potentially swap the druid out for him and just use him there this is kind of the core part of the team whenever you're thinking about building a layer team you're not thinking about the damage you're doing you're thinking how is this team going to survive like what is keeping this team alive and then you can build out from there because all a layer team really is is a really engine any dungeon team you're balancing between keeping your team alive and how much damage you can do so like speed teams when you're doing enough damage you don't have to worry so much about keeping your whole team alive because you're doing so much damage you're not going to be taking any in return and so this one we have a nice solid little build right here so these last three spots you really just fill in with attackers so you could put you could put like three dwarven gunners back here and it would work it would work just fine the dwarven gunners are really good three star single target nuker which is really all you need for the layer teams but i use barbarian and then two holy swordsmen holy swordsmen are what you really should have back here i just don't have a third one yet so i use my barbarian um and just Disclosure, I do have already farmed layer runes on most of these units. Uh, 
but I really only have two sets that provide any kind of tankiness to them. I have one immunity or one unity set on my necromancer, and I think I have one prayer on my druid. Do I have one on my jungle heart? Sorry, and I have one extra prayer set on my jungle heart. So three sets in total, which in all honesty, you could probably get from world boss or just craft them if your team's not running well. And so the fact that I have conflictors on here means my team is probably going to go a little bit faster than yours if you were to build this. But either way, it should still work because really the only thing I have is runes to speed up my runs, to farm runes a little bit faster. And if this isn't working, I'm using the Holy Swordsman crit rate leader skill. You can just swap that to the Golem and his shields will be 15% higher so that way he'll be blocking a lot more damage on your people. We're just gonna take this through now and we're gonna do one run in Lawful. I did beat the guards before this, I didn't feel like sitting through all of this. Especially when I could just beat it later. This team will probably work better in Lawful than it did in Evil because this frost effect has multiple tiers that all need to be taken off with turn cycling. I feel like I feel like it's actually the same in Evil. I don't know. I haven't read the passive in Evil because it doesn't really ever bother me that much. There's also no disabling passives in this one, so you could probably get rid of the Necromancer in this one for... Honestly, probably Una. I feel like Una would probably be better in this team than the Necromancer because she has disabling HP as well as a little bit extra turn cycling and some defense buffs and attack buffs. I don't think this team already has. No, it doesn't. So she would help to speed this team up a little bit, swap out the Necromancer for Una, and you'd probably have a little bit better of a run. But the Necromancer will help to get rid of the slow debuffs. Okay, once again, you can see a lot of absorbs are coming up. So that means that a lot of my team is not even taking damage when he does his giant aerial attack. But the main thing here is you don't want your back row to be taking enough damage to kill them in one shot. You want to make sure that if they do take any damage, it doesn't take down any more than say like 70% of their HP because you still want to be able to, to kind of heal them in between and then have a chance for the Golem to still be able to throw shields on them. My Barbarian is probably the worst ruined one out of my three in the back. So he's the one taking the most damage. But even with that, like I don't think anyone actually took any damage from that attack. Okay. And so there's Lawful. Let's see what we got. Uh, I'm going to sell that. Right now, let's just go beat these guards real fast. Then we're gonna do the chaotic camera. I went ahead and killed both the guards again. Well, let's get back in. So this one, each tier of the effect increases the amount of damage that your people actually take. So the way you get rid of this one is by having them attack multiple times. So having extra turn cycling in this one as well is really good. Really in any of the chimeras for your beginner team, you need to be turn cycling. That just makes sure to get rid of the the weaken effect, the frost tier effect, all the effects that they place on you, you need to be turn cycling to get rid of those. Because you can't cleanse them off with just like what the necromancer does. Okay, so we got rid of the attack breaks on all of my heroes. So you see like that right there would have gotten rid of all of that holy swordsman's effects because this thing constantly propped and allowed him to do even more. If you're able to throw some Berserk sets on units, like if you're using Dwarven Gunners instead of the four stars that I have at the back, if you're able to, to put some Berserk sets in there on your attackers, that would probably be best for your first team. Obviously, I know Berserk runes are not what you should be getting early game, but it would allow you to get rid of the weakened effects a lot faster. Hopefully, we should see a bunch of Absorbs on this one too. Yep. A lot of absorbs. I think the highest I saw was like 800 damage. Yeah, so you can see like almost none of my units are actually taking any damage. I think the, the worst off was like the Windwalker and even the Windwalker didn't have that much damage taken off. Turn cycling as well helps you get rid of these attack breaks that he throws on your heroes. And you can probably see Scorn popping up a lot. That's the, that's the Sanctified skill that I have on all of my attackers, you don't need that on them. I just like it because it helps to speed up like the second half of the run. Once again, a lot of absorbs. I think the highest I saw was 1145, which 
I'm guessing that was on my Windwalker again. Okay, there we go. So, something you want to be a little bit wary of, especially with this dungeon is, for the amount of weakened effects that you have on your people, because they can stack, like you might have seen my Windwalker at the end of that because Windwalker and Jungle Heart don't really attack that much. They mostly do other skills. Because of that, they tend to stack up a lot of these weakened skills a lot more. So every time, let's see if we can go in and look at this thing actually. Where is it? Um. Uh, no, it's in Chaotic. Yeah, so. His defense gets increased by an additional 0.2% for every tier of weakened effects. So that one of my Windwalker that had an extra, I think it was like 20 or 25, a ridiculous amount of those weakened effects. Because of that, he was gaining a bunch of defense just from my Windwalker being out there and being alive. So it almost would have been better if my Windwalker had like died right at the end. But that's just something that you need to kind of be cautious of because the more you can attack and the faster you can actually get through these dungeons really the better off you are especially for chaotic just because towards the end of the battle it just starts being so ridiculous so that's why especially in chaotic things like defense breaks so like my barbarian has a defense break i think on his yeah his second skill so that's why if you if you're not using things like a holy swordsman you really need to have a defense break out there because towards the end of the fight, it's just going to drag on and on if you don't have it. Or you might just end up dying because you just stack up so many of those abilities. So once again, I'll just show you guys my units. So we've got the Necromancer, who's really here for his third skill to remove negative effects. His first skill is also pretty good. It restores HP to whoever has the lowest percent HP. The Druid, who has a counter and defense break on his second skill, and then healing on his third skill. The Golem, who's really here for his passive to throw shields on everybody. Jungle Heart, who is here to provide a little bit of healing with their second skill, as well as reducing the amount of time negative status effects are on you and increasing the amount of beneficial effects on you. And then in the back row, we just have the Windwalker, who's just here for turn cycling. So we're using her second skill, Gale, and her third skill, Wind's Blessed. Really, all of these speed hp hp except for the golem you want the golem to have triple hp you don't want him taking a lot of turns you just want him to sit there and just throw out as much hp on those shields as possible I like that actually i didn't realize the necromancer had a, a better hp passive never mind use the necromancers or if you're using the holy swordsman and you don't quite have the crit rate on him use the holy swordsman he provides extra 19 percent just a reminder, if you guys want to be a part of my 500 subscriber giveaway, you got to make sure that you're liking, commenting, and subscribed to the channel. Winner's going to be getting $50 worth of packs on their account. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that this team kind of has a 4 star that is required for it, but like I said, if you don't have him summoned, you could always pull a Shadow Treant. He's really easy to pull from just a couple of unknown scrolls. I'm sure that you have some of those laying around. If you summon 10 of them, you might even get them right here. But if you do have all these units, I would suggest trying to use them, getting them rune right, and potentially seeing if you can beat your first layer team. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Later.